Hi, my name is Kevin Asselson. I wrote a microbiome prescription sign, and today I want to go through a revised set of features and also describe what the significance is, especially for anybody out there who's a data scientist or statistician. Okay, what you will do is you'll find that we have under Explorer we have things changed to five things: symptom versus bacteria, end products, which usually comes from harvesting data ad hoc, cake enzyme, cake module, and cake products. But all of the latter three are sweet because they are gene-based predictions based on the genes in specific bacteria. So we have three of them there. And if you take one of them, go like bacteria summary, you can go in and you will see at the bottom we have 369 items. 369 symptoms has statistically significant patterns. By statistically significant, I should explain, it means a p-value of 0 0.01 or less. Often for published medical journals, they only go for a p of 0 0.05. So we are doing five times more sensitive than many medical publications. So we are getting results which statisticians would generally be very pleased with, and personally I am pleased with it. Now, if we are going to go through quickly first, and then we'll go back and do some explanation. First, if we go through and look at um, sap brain fog, which is there. If I go and click on brain fog, I'll go over and find 141 entries there. Now, the 141 is looking across all the samples which we have and finding relationships there. Your sample won't have all the bacteria. So that is why we end up going and looking at the same one. And what we could do is we could log in, use the biome site demo, and we could go back to Explorer Bacteria. And I'm going to find the same one and the one with a large number of samples. The more samples that are matching a symptom, the more sensitive the um, analysis is. The high Z score here is indicator. The criteria to be included is has to be at least 2.58. When you get up to a value of 27 or 22, you're talking about one followed by 25, 30 zeros, and then a one for a chance of having by random. Remember, if you're talking about extremely, I mean extremely strong Cisco association. So let's go in and see that now I have logged in, keyword, now I click brain fog, and we have a new column saying match strong, etc. We also have a summary. Remember, we had something like 131 choices here. There's 52 here. Why did it go from 131 to 52? Simple, because there's only 51 of the bacteria identified were in this explicit sample. The rest of them we ignore. So we have 52 there, and we have 49, which are strong matches. We have very strong matches. We have three, which are strong, and then no weak. In other words, everything's strong. This particular person happened to know does suffer from brain fog. So it is a Beautiful demonstration of a excellent match. Okay, now at this point in time, I'm going to hop over and do a little bit of technical explanation, and then I'm going to come back and we're going to walk through all five of them. To get the technical notes, just click right here, makes it nice and easy. And what we, what I, okay, last three years I've known the big relationships. The problem is not being able to show them in a mathematical or statistical sense. Or if I do, I find a few, but the number just felt wrong as an excuse me, there must be more than that. There just must be. Uh, it's not the nature of nature not to have, to have a certain degree of relationships. So basically, that feeling, whatever, we're missing it. Somehow we're not handling the data right. That's it, that's something which I'm quite familiar with, having worked professional as a physician, and knowing that, oh, wait a minute, do you, if you do this, suddenly the data makes sense. 
And for three years for the microbiome, I've been trying to make sense of different things and slowly, one by one, cracking certain nuts. This is the latest nut which seemed to be cracked. Okay, technically, what we do is we take an actual reading, how many cases of bacteria, how many, what percentage, oh sorry, what is the actual number of the bacteria, and then we apply a monotonic increasing function to it. And what does that mean is if value, if we take a two values, one is less than the other, and apply the function, we still have one is less than the other. So it keeps the pattern, it keeps things in sequence or in order or whatever. Nice, simple concept, but it means we can go and twist the numbers around. We can stretch or shrink the numbers to our heart's content to get stronger statistical patterns. And figuring out the function, that's a whole kettle of worms. Okay, now once we get that, we actually end up transforming to a rectangular distribution for all samples. Rectangular distribution is a distribution that looks like that. On the right is a bell curve. We change it from, well, we, we know we don't have a bell curve. We have something real odd, comes here, and then takes off. What we end up is getting a shape on the left. And the shape on the left gives us some interesting aspects, which actually turns out to work very well. Uh, the, the main thing is that Generally, with bell curve, etc., you end up finding relationships at this end or at that end. Okay, that's nice. Relationships in the middle gets lost in the noise. With a rectangular or um, uniform distribution, we can actually detect if there are oddities in the middle somewhere, which is sweet. And we can even calculate the um, p value, the probability value of it happening by random. So it ends up being multiple transformations, the number characteristics are preserved. All we are doing is, as shown up above, we are um, keeping the nature of the data, which is scaling the numbers in order to, do, to get things better, and then saying, okay, we're not going to look at this, we're going to look at this mainly because it ends up giving us the ability to take the tech items in the middle, which are odd. We no longer confine to the end. And that is conceptually, that may be a challenge for some people because they are invested in the simple model. Oh, you must have too much of this or you must have too much of too little of that as the cause. Sorry, folks, that's not a cause. The cause is that there are a cluster of situations which causes something to happen. Example in the real world. Consider somebody who gets arrested for being a drug dealer. The background of that person could be lower in, lower class, a particularly ethnic group, uh, etc. But now you arrest a drug dealer who's driving a Maserati or a Ferrari. Rich parents, etc. So it's a different end of the spectrum. So we have have Drug dealers, we have two ends. We have the high end and we have the low end. Now, but so therefore a um, common working man's kid won't become a drug dealer. Wrong. There can be many reasons why that lower class or middle class kid become a drug dealer. Um, divorce in the family, negligence, peer pressure, as in the neighborhood they grew up in, etc., etc., etc. So we end up with the symptom being a drug dealer. And we have multiple pockets of characteristics, which are in some cases overlapping, like an absent father may occur in all three of them. Divorce may occur in all three of them. Neighborhood may occur in all three of them, but each one is different. And the same thing happens with bacteria or the microbiome. They may be, it's not one extreme or the other extreme, it can be middle chunks, which has a particular pattern, which results in a symptom or the person can be a drug dealer. Okay, so that is a bit of it. I toss in two videos of uh, other people explaining uniform distributions and characteristics. If you are familiar with the bell curve and not uniform distribution, probably worth listening to. Um, There's a bit of magic to it. If you 
transform the data appropriately. Okay, so let's get back. So we have, and we're going to use the same sample for each one and the same brain fog, it's just to illustrate. So we just did it this with bacteria. Let's go back and let's look at end products profile. End products profile. We find neurological brain one. We find less relationships. This is only 14 relationships. For the bacteria, we had 140, 10 times as many. So it means just chances our end product is a less sensitive items for the symptoms. And let's go in and take a look at a brain fog. And we find, wait a minute, there's only 14 end products which were um, forecast from this person's sample. Of the 14, 13 was very strong, one was strong. Remember this person had brain fog, we're looking at brain fog. And we have, very, very amusingly, we have concur concurrence. Now over to kick enzymes. Again, we go through here and we have 91 relationships. In other words, not as high number as bacteria, but in the same ballpark or less. And here we have, we have, again, we have a astounding, literally astounding match saying, hey, this pattern matched 59 times, very strong, strong was nine. And at this point of time, I'm going to just take a little bit of look down to see. Let's see by Z score. Okay, so we can see the Z score here. The remember the criteria is that the um, relationship has to be over have a probability of 0 0.01, which is 2.62, I think it is, or something like that. So we have trimmed it down. Here's your percentile, and here is a important word, middle peak. It's not the extremes, it is somewhere in the middle. This is the odd combination of factors that's happening. You so you have 37 percentile. If you hover over here, you will see the Z score, which is the number of standard deviations from where people with this particular symptoms are sitting. It's negative, which means your percentile. And the typical one is your percentile is below the typical. So if you increase the site bit, you're probably going to get a stronger characteristic. If you take it the other direction towards the lower down to 20 percentile, you will probably drop into being weak or no, or no match. So that's one of the things to keep in mind is all the hyper over shows the direction be negative or Positive, some cases, almost all of the cases here are negative, which means that your numbers and the numbers for the typical pattern from the samples is your, your value take away the typical value is a negative, which means you are, these values are below what the average value of people with this characteristic is. Okay, so I think for some people to digest and other people to say, what did he just say? Let's go over to modular. Same thing. And we have general, wait a minute, general fatigue gets more this time. So we have cake modulars having greater impact for detecting general fatigue than brain fog, which is a little bit of surprise, but here is, we have just three relationships. Okay, let's take a look at those. Of the three relationship, one and only one is in this person's data. And basically, person happens to be very low, is a middle peak. And if you go over here, you'll see that it is, the z-score is, means there's two cent deviations from it, so it's not very predictive. Okay, and quick products, the same thing, we go for samples. Uh, again, we have 
your logical there, we have 49. So again, it's less than bacteria. And here we have combination and we can again sort by whatever we want to sort by. And strong key thing is we have 43 items. We have 42 matches, one strong match. Again, the model appears to match the person's symptoms. The person is known to have brain fog, and we have a nice match there. Now, I'm going to flip back, and I'm going to take a look at somebody else's. And in this case, we have absolutely no match. It's nothing which is a match for bacteria. Um, and actually, let's go over and let's take a look at number one. Okay, here we have a different examples, and we have 39 for, again, most of these are probably coming from the same person who I suspect has ongoing problem. Okay, here we have one week, etc. So we can go down and to our heart's content and go through. The catch is, middle peak is what will show up tons and tons and tons of time. And that is because we are not dealing with symptoms being caused by extreme values. Using extreme values thinking simplifies the world. The microbiome is not as simple. And once you accept that you can have a middle peak as being the cause, we can, we can make good progress there. And here we have a very nice, easy summary, I think. So now if we go back to Explorer, um, and let's go back to bacteria. Uh, let's go on to something silly. Let's do age 60 to 70 and see what comes up. And we have basically 93 bacteria matches, 72, some weak ones. So that is a, um, there we go over, we get some more weak ones, we get more weak ones. And I, the difference is whatever that isn't there. And we can go on ad nauseum, but basically it gives you indication of the patterns, the amount of data, number uh, samples which are annotated influences sensitivity. And so that's basically it. Um, the, this is experimental. I'm pretty sure I'm doing all my calculations correctly. And although the number of items seems to be relatively huge, the items basically come out because of being able to detect middle shifts. Here we have of uh, 87 items, only three are high, and let's see how many are low. And we have 16 that are low. We have three that are high, that's 19 out of 87, so about 25, 20, 20% 20 are at the extreme, the other 80% are middle shifts. Middle shifts. It takes a bit of fun to be able to detect them statistically, but once you go over and start working at that model, happiness happens, at least to me, happiness. Okay, so that will give you some ideas as to what is there. Um, this is the first release. Expect numbers to change or to be modified or whatever. Um, the for the explorer for bacteria summary. I am likely going to go and probably add the handpicked bacteria. But the handpicked bacteria is going to largely be on highs or lows um, because that's how the suggestions are based on as high and low because it uses the shift It'd be in time I may be able to modify it. but we notice we only have six items here out of 52 which are there I that's barely 10% so 
So 90% are middle patterns, not there. End patterns, 10%. That's why I was finding very few of them. Now, being able to detect middle patterns, I had a field day. Lots of strong relationships found. Again, these are middle patterns. We can take a look at your one, 74 percentile. Okay, that's lovely here. Uh, Z score 11 is high. Your percentile is 100. And that's not surprising. Another one, which is high, you're 97.6. You Z score is high, means that the numbers are actually going to be pretty close. Number one, I need high. Okay, uh, middle peak is five. Let's see how much there. Chances are, the, are in this case, the number of size of samples is small, which means that the standard deviations become large. So as more data comes in, things hopefully will be refined better, but everything is based on data. Okay, I'm going to shut up and let you go and explore.